Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday morning in the old cookbook show. Today we're gonna to make a cake. Now, every once in a while I come across recipes in these older cookbooks um, that even though they're from, you know, days long gone by, the one we're gonna to make today is from 1889. It is the kind of cake that I believe has a place in 2022. It's simple, doesn't use a lot of ingredients. Um, it seems like something that is very fast to make. And once we get the basics down, um, we'll be able to, be, you can flavor it any way you want. And there's a whole bunch of ways that you can make this cake later. And I've got these all going through my head and I'm thinking, let's try the base cake as it's presented in the C.H. Eddy and Company's cookbook. Um, Brattleboro, Vermont, from 1889. Now, C.H. Eddy and Company, they made flavoring extracts, uh, things like lemon, bay rum, ginger extract, vanilla extract, those sorts of things. And so some of the recipes in this cookbook use their extracts, but a lot of them don't. And I think they were just hoping that you would grab for their cookbook at, in the kitchen with all of these other recipes, always see their name. And then when you went to the market, you would buy their products. So we're gonna make something called a tea cake. I'm using a copper bowl. You don't have to use a copper bowl, but I'm gonna whip up these two eggs. Okay, so we've got those two eggs pretty frothy. Now I'm gonna add sugar and continue beating them together, whipping them up. So it tells me to whip these until they're very light, and I think that is very light. We've got some really nice texture there. Next ingredient is thick sour cream. So I'm supposed to put a cup of thick sour cream into the mix, and I'm supposed to add baking soda to the sour cream. So I've got some pretty thick sour cream here. Hopefully I've got a cup. Yeah, I've got a cup. Okay. Cup of sour cream and the baking soda. And I'll just start to mix the baking soda in. A lot of instructions in baking and cooking are holdovers from earlier times where things mattered a whole lot and advances in milling and chemistry and production and quality control have changed some of those things that they're not as important anymore, but they get, you know, <laughs> they get repeated over and over because they were repeated to you, and so you just repeat them on to the next person, and on to the next person, and on to the next person. In the end, um, in 2022, I think I could have just put the sour cream into the eggs, and then put the uh, baking soda into the eggs, and then whip them together, and everything is going to be fine. So, whip those in. I've got that whipped in. Now I'm supposed to stir in two cups of sifted flour. So I've got the flour. I'm going to put in maybe half to start with. Stir that in and then stir in the second half. Now we come to the flavorings and the book just says flavor however you want. Now they're hoping that you choose one of their flavorings. Um, C.H. Eddy and Company's flavorings are not available to me. So, you know, we could do ginger, we could do bay rum, you could do vanilla, lemon, I mean, you could do almond extract if you want almond. I'm gonna put in a little bit of lemon and I'm not sure how much. Here's the thing, this is why I think this is a great cake. And we'll see. Um, because the base, the batter of the cake is very prescriptive do these things and you get a cake. The flavoring is up to you, the baker. Oops, that's no good. Is up to you, the baker. And I think that's something that's missing in a lot of baking these days. We're told over and over and over again, baking is a science, it's an exact formula, you have to do exactly this or it's not gonna work out, you're gonna have failure. And for the base cake, there's still a lot of leeway. But when it comes to flavoring, 
I do believe that you can flavor them any way you want. And so I'm going to put that little bit of lemon in. I might put a little bit more, bump it up a little bit because I don't smell the lemon too much. This could be any flavor. And I think in the future, if the texture of this cake works out, what I want to do over the next few weeks is come back to this base cake, make it again and again, and flavor it completely differently or use the batter completely differently and see what we come up with. So I've got a... Um, got a 9 by 9 cake pan. It's got a parchment sling in the bottom. I think the pan is too big. Again, like many recipes from this time period, it doesn't say anything about the size of the pan that you're supposed to cook it in. We'll just spread this out. and into the oven. And it just says quick oven and no time, so I'll watch it pretty closely. Okay, so famous last words about watching it closely. I put it into the oven, the temperature that it told me to, um, and I set a timer for 20 minutes, figuring 20 minutes would work, but it probably only needed 15 minutes. What we have here- Are you here, explaining the edges? Well, what we have um, here is a, a weird little your cake. puff, your puff, Sorry, hi <laughs> friends. I was kind of sidetracked by Glenn's story of whoa, and the puffiness of the cakes. Um, so this is called a tea cake. It's from an 1899 cookbook by C. H. Eddy and Company. And I'm I'm interested in this cake because I think that there's other things I can do with it. So it's got some really big. Like those are some really big holes. Yeah. I'm assuming due to its time, there's not a lot of sugar in it. You seem to be pretty excited. I see your little dance of joy. Okay. The interior is what I thought it was going to be. The interior, so th there's, there's no fat in this cake. The only fat in this cake comes from some sour cream. And there's a little bit of lemon flavoring because it said to flavor how you wanted to, but it didn't say how much or, or what to do. I have plans for this cake. I can see how it's a tea cake though. Mm-hmm. It's not super sweet. Not super sweet. Nope. It's uh, kind of spongy and soft. It is very soft. Even though it looks over-baked, it is over-baked. <laughs> Let me be clear. It is over-baked by about five minutes at that temperature. But it's not dried out. It's not dried out. No, it's still very soft inside, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have come back to this channel this coming Saturday, and I'm going to use this cake as a base for something else. It would be really good with like strawberry drizzle on top. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm. Am I giving away your ideas? No. Okay. But yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so pretty good cake, pretty good base. This cake will accept lots of flavorings. See you next Saturday. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.